Welcome, welcome. Football season is well underway and the Lions are doing pretty darn good. I just happen to be in Michigan, so that's the team that we root for. I personally could not care less about football. I grew up in a household. We didn't watch it. Uh, My wife, though, she is a fangirl and she has been wanting to watch the Lions for years. However, we both agreed that we're not going to pay $80 to $90 per month on a service like Fubo or whatnot to stream simply the Lions when we already stream tons of other stuff on our TV. So I did what any 80s kid would do. I tried to get a little creative and figure out how can I do this in a free or very inexpensive but legal method. That sent me down the dark rabbit hole of the internet, scouring forums and checking other YouTube videos. And I happened to find a video from north coaster hobby where he showed how to make a diy antenna of an old coax cable or coaxial cable now if you're born after 2000 you might not know what a coax cable is but it's simply that little uh, stub that sticks out of the back of your tv that's threaded where you screw something onto it and it's got a little hole in the center of it that's where the coax cable goes relax i'm just making fun i'm the one sitting here with a gray beard now i personally have not thought of antennas in probably 20 25 years And I've come to find out that they no longer send out the analog signals. It's all digital now. But you can still make a makeshift antenna and pick up those digital signals. And so I decided to do what any good husband would do. I channeled my inner 80s kid and I took advantage of what I have lying around. And what I have lying around in the crawl space are hundreds of feet of coax cable. And when this house was wired for cable television, which we haven't used in about a decade. So by the end of this video, you will know how to watch the Lions or your favorite football team in a free and legal method. You'll know how to make a quick makeshift antenna. You'll know how to tune your Roku TV or a modern standard TV without a Roku. And hopefully when all of that is said and done, you'll be able to host the next football party at your house. So let's get started. Now, the first thing you might be able to use if you are in an area that is populated enough, if you're in a city or an urban area and you're close to one of the places where they send out the digital signals, you might be able to get away with one of these uh, antennas from Walmart. Um, They come in 20, 30 mile ranges. They are definitely more aesthetically pleasing than the method I'm about to show you, but this might just work well enough for you. The length of the coax cable on this is only about six feet, I think, so you don't have a lot of room to play uh, to find a signal. I recommend um, the homemade method because you can get a 20 foot, 30 foot, 50 foot length, whatever you got lying around, and you can uh, do a lot more trial and error. Because if you're new to antennas, you should know that they are very finicky. You can be in one spot and have perfect signal, and then you move six inches or 12 inches one way or the other, and you'll have absolutely nothing. So the more room you have to play with an antenna signal, the better. Now, you're going to need a coax cable, obviously, for the antenna. The other tools that you're going to need for this project are going to be, um, I took a pair of needle nose pliers because they can cut through copper wire. So I got that. You're going to need to cut off one of the ends. You're going to need some wire strippers to cut out the sheathing, and you're going to need a razor blade to cut or score the outside of that sheathing to get this whole process started. You're going to need a hammer or a pry bar to remove any staples that might be holding the coax cable down in your crawl space or your attic or whatnot. You might need a drill as well if you're going to construct some sort of a frame and maybe some zip ties. And with all of that, you can get this whole thing going. Now, the end result is going to look something like this. You're going to want to have a copper um, wire sticking off to one side and then this foil side on the other. And it kind of makes like this T-shape. So go ahead and cut off the end of a coax cable and go down about a foot, 12 inches or so. And you're going to gently score this outer sheathing of this coax cable with a razor blade. You don't wanna cut all the way through. Um, If you cut too deep, you're gonna cut through the foil um, strands that you're gonna need for this antenna. But basically, once you get it scored, just kind of bend it back and forth till you split uh, that whole thing and then take your knife again and just gently cut yourself a little spot there to give yourself a tag end to grab onto. Uh, From here, you just grab a pair of needle nose pliers and you can kind of shuck the whole thing out of its skin. And on my coax cable for the demonstration, this happened to have a protective foil thing around it. The one I ended up using in reality, uh, the 20 foot length, that didn't have that protective sheathing. So I actually screwed up a couple times with the knife and had to keep redoing it. But you're gonna want to loosen up this um, like accordion braided type, um, these strands, these metallic strands, and just grab yourself a thumbtack or whatnot and you can kind of start picking away at it and just rotate it as you go. Uh, This is going to be tedious and it's going to get really hard once you get down three, four inches. It's going to start coiling up. So 
what I found the easiest thing is, is just try to loosen it up and compress it down towards the base as much as you can. And here's a little tip or trick to save you some time. Just make a little opening and feed the wire through just like this. And it saves you a lot of time. So that would be my little helpful trick after having watched the um, North Coaster Hobby video. Try to do that as soon as possible and save yourself a headache. From here, go ahead and grab the uh, wire cutters. And I just went for 16 gauge and just do half inch chunks at a time and take off this outer um, sheathing that goes around that copper wire core. And go ahead, just do half inch chunks. If you do an inch or more, there's going to be too much friction and it's going to be a bear to get that off. And you can go much faster just doing small chunks at a time. You can just rip them off very, very quickly. Once everything is done, go ahead and bend on a 90 degree the copper wire one way and then twist all of these uh, fine strands into like one cord and go ahead and bend that out the other way. And from there, I built a quick frame to keep these from touching each other. Um, you want to just have them spread apart for maximum uh, ability to pick up signal. And I, go, I went ahead and took some scrap lumber and just use some zip ties. Again, this is not to look pretty. I just grabbed some zip ties and made a little T-frame there. And I split the copper wire going off one way and the foil side going off to the other. Held it together with zip ties. Everything's working great. This is only out for game day and it goes back in the garage once everything is done. So I'm not here to win an award for how it looks. And if you wanted to have it look nicer, you're more than welcome to figure that out. Once that's done, go to tvpassport.com type in your uh, zip code and get an idea of what channels are going to be available in your area that are sent out digitally that can be picked up with an antenna. I'm looking for Fox. So I'm looking at nine dash two and 33 dash one. They both carry the lions on the particular day and time that I'm looking for. So confirm that, write those numbers down. You're going to need those when you do a channel scan. Now go ahead and plug in your coax cable to get started. Again, I recommend having the longest one that you can find. It's a 20 foot minimum, probably. Go ahead and set it outside. That's where you get the best signal, but you can find a spot inside. In fact, when I was all done with this, I found that I can get the lines as well inside if I put the antenna right there above my cupboards. But I tried 50 other places inside my house and I could not find a signal whatsoever. From there, if you have a Roku TV, go ahead and go to the main menu, then go to um, TV inputs, down to antenna, and then you're going to scan for channels. If this is your first time, the menu might look slightly different. I've already scanned for channels before, so it's just asking me, do I want to scan again? But you'll be able to figure out what the appropriate uh, buttons are. From there, go ahead and say scan again. Now keep in mind when you scan again, I believe this clears out your previous channels that you found. And a quick timeout with modern TVs and how they are unlike TVs from the 80s. Back in the 80s, we could simply dial in the channel to what we wanted, even if we didn't have a signal. And you could then move the antenna around. And when you found the signal with the antenna, it would then display on the TV. Modern TVs, you have to, you only get the channels on the TV that your antenna can pick up. So you can't pre-tune it to 9-2 or 33-1 and then go outside and find the signal and then call it good. And it would take five minutes. Now it can take hours because you have to run a scan each and every time you move the antenna to see what does the TV recognize. It will not do a predetermined channel. It's a pain in the butt. And if anybody has figured out how to work around that, go ahead and leave it in the comments below. But back to the scan. This will take about five minutes. Go ahead and play on your phone. And again, you're going to want to do this whole thing when you have nothing else to do. When you have several hours to kill and you're just going to play around on your phone, this is a perfect time to do this. If you have a TV that has a Roku, but it's not a Roku TV, go ahead and switch it over to TV as the input. Don't stay on HDMI. Once you're there, go to the menu, go to settings. There will be a tuner option. Set it to antenna, not cable, and then do an auto channel scan. And this is going to take about five minutes or so. So play around on your phone. And once everything is done, we're going to see what channels we have picked up from our Roku TV and our regular TV. You can see so far I've picked up four channels. That's not a lot. I was hoping for more like 20 and I ended up finding that at one place, but everything's done. Scan through your channel, see what you got. I noticed I did not have the ones that I was looking for. So you go ahead and go outside and move your antenna. In this demonstration, I only moved it six inches. In reality, I think I was moving it two feet at a time. 
along my roof edge, along the edge of my deck, along my grill area. I went in the front yard. I went in the backyard. I went, I tried it in all of the bedrooms. It's a pain in the butt. Once you have it moved, go ahead and go inside and you're going to redo the whole process. Scan for channels and sit around and wait for five minutes. Once again, if you don't find the channels you want, repeat the process by moving the antenna. Probably a little overkill here, but this is the process and I probably did this 50 times. And when all was said and done, I ended up finding it um, when I kind of gave up and I set my antenna down on the table right next to my blackberry bushes and it barely picked up Fox when it was sitting there closer to the ground than when it was way up in the air. Now, when I went inside and saw that I had 9-2, I was so happy. Fox, Detroit, everything is good to go. This is where you do not run another channel scan. Your TV already picked it up and has preloaded this as a channel that it can receive now. Now it is on you to go out and move the antenna to where the signal is best. Now, if you've never done this, this is quite easy. If you have two people, one person stays inside and they yell to the person outside when the signal is clear. If you're by yourself, go ahead and just jack up the volume on the TV so that you'll be able to hear it when you're outside through an open door or window. And then go ahead and move your um, antenna around. And once you hear the volume, you know that you're at least picking up sound. Come in, check the picture. It might be pixelated. Go ahead and move the antenna six more inches or six more inches back, forward, to the side. And you will find where you can get this channel crystal clear. Go ahead and mark that spot so you don't forget. And I ran a little zip tie through my soffit underneath my overhang on my roof and I put a closed zip tie there and then a little piece of string where I can hold the antenna in place. At the bottom I have a few bricks so I keep the base from moving. And remember this is only staying up for the duration of the game and it goes back in the garage so it's not there for looks. But once Lion's Day came I was able to turn this on and get kickoff. And that is it guys. I hope this video helps you out. It shows you how to make a quick antenna to get the Lions or your favorite football game going. And uh, just make sure you visit that website to find out what channels are available in your area. Write them down. Keep doing the channel scans until you find that. You might find the channel without a picture. It's no problem. Do not run another scan. Just go ahead and jack up the volume on your TV. Move your antenna around until you pick up that signal. And you should be good to go. And hopefully this will let you host the next NFL party at your house. Stay safe out there. Thanks for watching. Appreciate it.